My name is Aaron Bullivan. I'm the high school principal here at Harbor Beach. And it was my honor, my great honor today to meet the entire class of 2026 as they came as eighth graders to visit Harbor Beach High School. What a fantastic group of kids. I do want to point out our, our school mission statement. Everything we do at Harbor Beach Schools is to improve the lives of students both now and in the future. We want to prepare all of our kids for whatever comes next, even the un un uh, even the things that we can't even imagine yet. We want to prepare them for their futures. This is a, a list of topics we're going to cover today. I'm going to start off with some staff introductions and then move on down the list. So I said, my name is Aaron Boulder, and as you can see, I was an English teacher. And I have a, a, a master's degree in educational administration. My, my extracurricular that I am in charge of is the high school middle school board game club. So if I told the students today, if you like board games and card games, I'm your guy. We meet once a week after school for two hours, and we play board games and card games that I bring and teach to students, or some that they bring. So that's one of my favorite things to do. And my superintendent, Dr. Bishop. see my face and then you know who I am and know that there's multiple ways of getting a hold of me. Um, if you need my help, you can always call, you can stop by, you can email me, I don't mind. Um, try to make time for everyone. A lot of the kids um, know me either as elementary principal from years ago or in my current position. Just remember my job is to make sure that it goes as smoothly as possible in your time here. Uh, the pieces that here has up there are accurate for me. Uh, my background is I taught elementary school I, um, as a teacher, mostly first grade, second grade, and third grade. And then I became an elementary principal at the school that I was teaching in. Then I became curriculum director, then assistant superintendent at Bay City, um, and then became an elementary principal here for a short period of time, um, and then back as superintendent. So that's my background. My education background I have an associate's degree in art. I have a bachelor's degree in social studies, a bachelor's degree in education with majors in math and social sciences, I have a master's degree in technology, I have a doctorate in education and school leadership. Um, most of those are from Central Michigan University. So, um, I also took classes at Michigan State University, Rome Green, um, and at Delta College. And most recently, I, I finished a year ago, I finished a certificate in education leadership and management from Harvard University. Um, so those are my background degrees. Um, with that, I want to just remind you, I was serious. If you need my help with anything, anything at all, just please let me know. Uh, my door is literally always open, probably open too much. Um, sometimes I'm like, man, I should shut that piece of stuff. But anything you need, I'm there for you. Thank you. 
courses like those offered at the Tech Center also apply to agriculture classes at Harbor Beach. So whenever you hear when they talk about the requirements, whenever you hear someone say the Tech Center or Career Tech Ed, I want you to remember that, that what they do in two years in a very intensive three-hour day program, we do similarly in Harbor Beach over the course of four years in a one-hour day program. Because it's career and tech ed, it's taught using the three-circle model. What that means is it includes not only classroom instruction, but also work-based learning and leadership. Classroom instruction is exactly what you think of in the school, doing stuff in the lab, doing stuff in the classroom. For work-based learning, we might have something as simple as helping with the school garden or raising chickens. Something as complex as a student might decide to take on something like running their own business or raising animals of their own. And then the leadership component is FFA. If you are interested in joining FFA, this is the way to get that started. The FFA is the leadership component, so we work on things like teamwork, presentation, and a little bit of competition. For example, if you do choose to take a biology, one of our first projects is with chickens. We're going to learn about nutrition for those animals, we're going to learn about raising them, and we're going to learn about marketing them as a product. So the competition part comes in when we compare those to all the chickens raised by other classes in this year. So it's kind of a little fun portion to it there. The last thing I wanted to tell you about the agriculture classes at Harbor Beach is that just like classes at the Tech Center, there are agreements between colleges and those classes. And the agriculture class does include an agreement with Michigan State University for six credits. And in order to receive those six credits, you need to complete the program of studying agriculture at Harbor Beach, which would include a minimum of two years most students do three or four years of A classes if they really get into it, with a C or better as a grade. And to earn your state application, which is determined by a number of hours in that work-based learning, as well as some other things like community service. So I hope to see most of your students throughout the next couple of years, either in A biology as freshmen, or I see a lot of sophomores who take chemistry too. Most of the students in Harvard Beach are in my classroom at some point or another. And I look forward to it. Thank you. Hi, I'm Brian Fuller. Um, I am the assessment 
coordinator and academic and career counselor for the schools. Um, I spent most of the day with most of your students um, setting up courses for next year. Um, and we'll get into some of the specifics of that um, at a little bit later part of the, the program. So just wanted to say hi, and uh, we'll be happy to get soon. Uh, with a big, uh, big people and not necessarily the basketball game or the football game. 
Okay, so uh, good to see everybody. Uh, I, I have been working with the young men in here, pretty much all of them, and the rest of them are coming from the country school. I have not worked with a lot of young ladies yet. That's because uh, in the seventh grade, they present uh, girls are with Mrs. Ford and the boys are with myself. I look forward to working with uh, everybody in here. I do teach high school physical education. Uh, Mr. Fuller asked me a question earlier what's the difference between bigger, faster, stronger, and the advantage is that there's not much of a difference uh, anymore. The bigger, faster, stronger tends to be uh, strength training and the fitness center more. The other class, a few more times with uh, gym, gym activities. So we try to get people on a uh, workout plan, regular exercise program, uh, and then have some fun with that too. I see up there, uh, it says weightlifting club. Weightlifting club has been an informal club that we've done for several years where a uh, young, young man or young woman is interested in uh, fitness, year-round fitness, and that's important for, uh, for athletics and for just general fitness. Uh, we come in and uh, we lift the weights and sometimes people play with basketball and, and do things like that uh, during, during off hours. And everybody is encouraged to do that, everyone is invited to do that. Uh, besides teaching just that, I do coach, I coach football. Football is one of my favorite sports, uh, but I love all the sports. Uh, for football, we need a large group of young men uh, to be able to compete. And so, you know, I encourage anybody that you've never tried football before, uh, certainly give it a try. If you don't like it, uh, that's fine. A lot of people try to enjoy it. If that's not your passion as an athletic director, I encourage every young man and young woman here to get involved. We talked earlier today, uh, a small school like this, as an athletic director, I'd like everybody to do three sports. One in the fall, one in the winter, one in the spring. If you can't do three, do two. If you can't do two, uh, do one. Great opportunity here to get involved with athletics, JV and other extracurriculars, uh, robotics, band, art, uh, whatever, whatever your passion is. Uh, last thing I guess I'm going to have to say is uh, with athletics, but just with the school in general, we talked earlier today that it starts counting now. You know, ninth grade, we start keeping track of things. Your record counts. Uh, I see a lot of uh, young people do extremely well, do their academics and they're great and have no problem. Lately, and more and more lately, I see some that struggle to do their daily work. I think COVID is part of that. They don't do their schoolwork, they get behind, and then they're struggling. And then all of a sudden, uh, it's springtime, they want to go out for baseball, and they're failing two or three classes. So I encourage uh, all the young uh, men and women in here to focus on your academics. Day to day, do your schoolwork, do it well, they didn't have time. Study, study for your tests and quizzes. Uh, doors, doors will open. I hate to see doors uh, go shut just because people aren't uh, doing their schoolwork. Last thing, uh, this is the code of conduct and medical release. Uh, for each sport that you play, basically once a year you have to do this. Once a year, and then it's just pass from coach to coach to coach. Uh, these are basically the athletic policies that the athlete agrees to and not drinking, not smoking. Uh, getting good grades, and there's two pages at the end with the parent and guardian, uh, science along with the uh, student athlete. And so this is a one time uh, per year. If you want to pick up an extra one on your way out, you sure can. Uh, the concussion form for athletics is just a one time deal. If your son or daughter has played an athletic sport through the school already, uh, they've filled one of these out and they're good for their whole career. If they have not, you want to pick one up, uh, just talk about. Uh, Concussions and concussion protocol, and then there's a sheet to, to sign. The most important one probably is the physical. Physical has to be done every year to play a school sponsored sport. Uh, it's, a, it's an easy date to remember, April 15th. Even the kids do this morning on April 15th. Uh, later, we're doing this afternoon on April 15th. Means. So you have to have a physical after April 15th for it to be good for the uh, next sport year. We are talking with the player right now, trying to get them to come in here in late April, early May to do the physicals right here, hopefully at a very low cost, so we can get those taken care of for next year. As soon as we find out whether that's going to happen or not, we'll try to get that information out. All right. Any questions? All right. Who's next? It's me. Good evening, everybody. 
Um, a lot of you know that I have been here a very, very long time. And if you turn to your parents and they graduated from Harbor Beach, I'm sure I was walking the halls at the same time they were. Um, two things I'd like to talk about before I talk about my classes is uh, the first thing is the Remind app. Did you know that that is a way to communicate when most of us are also signed up on all of the classes, all the graduating classes? So if your son or daughter is at home and they have a question, it's like 7, 8 o'clock at night, and they need to get a hold of, say, like I'm on the app, they can actually text me a little message and it doesn't go through our private numbers. And then most of the time, my phone's fairly close, so I check it before I go to bed and I usually respond immediately. So that's something that's maybe something that you want to think about. Also, there's the Skyward app. Parents can have the Skyward app also. And uh, one thing that's really hard as a teacher is, you know, your student, your child is failing the class and the Skyward app is available to both of you and the parents are checking it and then we get a phone call or I email them or I let them know and then it's kind of too late to recover. So if there's anything that you can do for your child right now before they start ninth grade is to sign up for Skyward and if you don't know how, let us know please and we will help you and also make sure that you and your child are also signed up for the family. Um, I do teach art, and I teach a class called Life Management. Um, the art classes are your general art classes. They're one semester long. They can take four years, they can take one year. Um, there are the general things in art, like drawing and painting and sculpture, design work. You don't have to be talented to take a class. That's what the class is for, to teach you how to um, do some of those things. It's also a nice class because you get to visit with your friends a little bit. It's project-based. There aren't a lot of worksheets. And it helps you to work one side of your brain and the other side that sometimes you don't get to. The other class I teach that's art-based is called Creative Studies, and that's something that I kind of developed on my own. And we were looking for a class that wasn't so much about the drawing and the painting. So in creative studies, one thing we do is we do some cooking. So we do basic cooking like how to make recipes and cookies and things like that. We do pierogies. So we probably do um, five projects a year that are cooking based. The kids bring in a family recipe and they actually make a cookbook, a little cake out of it. So they do learn. We have a photography unit in that class. We learn about basic graphic design um, programs. We do story writing. We do things like cultural art, like egg and tea king, and um, mosaics and things like that. That is a one-year class. You have to be sophomore, junior, or senior to take that. You don't have to have art one and two to take creative studies, but it is recommended. The other class that I teach is called Life Management. And it's a combination of consumer ed, remember that class back in the day, and home ed. So we talk about different types of foods. We do a ton of cooking. They learn how to cut up a chicken. We learn how to freeze vegetables. We do salsa. We have a lot of fun. That's also project-based. I teach them how to read a lease, how to shop for an apartment how to shop for a car, how to we do a little maintenance, like change, um, checking your oil, air pressure, your tires. I teach them how to do laundry, how to sew on buttons, how to get, um, what's insurance? We have somebody come and talk about insurance. We also talk about, um, uh, like, debit cards. <laughs> All the things that we wish our parents would have thought of when we learned the hard way. So um, I would really encourage you to talk to your, your child about taking that class when they're older. That's a junior, senior level class. And I know they're going to be hot to take, you know, the dual enrollment and the college classes and things like that to save a lot of money. But I will tell you, when your child rents an apartment in Saginaw or in Mount Pleasant, 
and they get stuck with the lease because one of their employees moved out. That's going to cost you money also, isn't it? So that's something that we really talk about in that class. Um, creative studies will be available when they're juniors, and the lighting management will be available when they're seniors because we teach that class every year. So it's nice to see them. I'll be Miss Swasky. Oh. I could have missed Swasky. Hello, I'm Mr. Twilliger. The previous slide was Miss Swasky, and I think I said that me, if you weren't here, I get to talk about, right? I actually, all right. Miss Swasky is a special ed teacher. She's also a Walmart class advisor. She's an amazing teacher, and I guarantee you'll be able to learn in some form in an after school event. You probably see the basketball games with her little baby thing. That's me. I'm Mr. Twilliger. Uh, I teach a lot of different math and science classes. For you eighth graders, the main ones are geometry and biology. I teach the general biology. I'm on the opposite end of uh, Mrs. Lake who teaches ag bio, and it's more general based where we're in the lab, not it's not farm based, it's more good old fashioned teachers. Like you see in the movies when they're in the labs and the morning teacher talking, you know, like that. Hopefully a little better than that, but like that. Uh, in geometry, that's one of my favorite classes to teach because it helps keep me in shape. Yeah. Alright, anyway, the one of the nice things about teaching geometry is even if I don't have you as a freshman, I'll have you as a sophomore. And either way, that's great. I get to see every student at least once. Um, now with many of you, you may already know that you'll be taking a big algebra exam at the end of the year, right? let you kind of know where you stand to go into algebra or geometry. I will say this year I have been teaching algebra and geometry, and if you pass that test and you feel like you aren't confident in your algebra skills, there's no shame in you choosing to do uh, another year of algebra. Because, what, 68% of the SAT is just basic algebra. Geometry is a lot of basic algebra in it. So even if you pass the test like you barely pass it, Talk to one of your teachers about making that decision through borderline, because it's okay to take algebra again. And I'm not trying to force you guys not to take algebra, so I'll make sure that we have a backbone, or a good math backbone to move forward through it. Um, after that, I do teach pre calc AP Bio, AP Stats, and Anatomy. Um, all those classes are a lot like Mr. Ramsey's Life Skills and Creative Studies, where they alternate. So you'll have to check your schedule when you can take each one. Like AP status is offered next year, but pre-calc isn't. And then the year after you can take pre-calc, but I will be teaching AP status. Same with AP bio and anatomy. I'll talk to you guys more about that when you're a sophomore for sure. The other thing I do is I'm a student council advisor. Freshman, future freshman, I should say. You guys have 30, I've been close. First week of school, if you're interested in joining the student council, that's when you're going to do it. I will be making announcements. I will put on the groups and talk to you. Student council is the group that puts on assemblies. We come up with the themes and dates for coming home and homecoming. We have a lock-in in two weeks that we're in charge of planning. The powder and bluff volleyball tournament we just did the student council. So pretty much all of the bonus activities are planned by student council. So if you like a hand in that, that's amazing. I got it. I've had two freshmen this year who have just been all-stars at it. So even if you're a freshman, we will give you tasks and let you do things and make decisions. Okay, where's Andrea? I'm going to put Andrea's on. Andrea, put Andrea. Where are you? Hey, hey, just saying, your brother is killing it as a freshman. So don't tell him I said that. Okay. So again, if you're interested in that, if you miss that window, there's one thing I like, one way I like to bat out people is, I make a few announcements, I get all the forms, and I don't remind you. If you don't hand in your forms to join it, you're out. If you come to me too late, it's too late. Okay? So make sure you're listening if you're interested. First week of school next year. Um, I guess that's all I had. It saved the last for last. That's what I would have said. Thank you. Mrs. White's not here. Um, we are fortunate at Harvard Beach Schools to have a partnership with the community hospital, and uh, we have we have two staff members that, that work with the high, with the hospital and the school. 
they weren't able to make it tonight, but they asked me to include their, their slides and talk a little bit about them. Mrs. Hogue is our on-site nurse. We have a student health center where she is located. She does general nursing activities, bumps and bruises, ice packs, all kinds of things. Um, in order for a student to see Mrs. Hogue, they need to have a signed permission slip, and that is part of our registration packet every year. In with Mrs. Hogue is Mrs. Cleland, our counselor. Students need to have a signed permission slip in order to meet with her as well. But she is more for one-on-one -on -one counseling, students with emotional needs, anxiety, depression, students who just need a little extra support. And I would say a lot of students, probably more than ever, need the social emotional supports that we're blessed to have Mrs. Cleland provide for us. I have a couple slides in here that are results from the surveys the students took today. At the end of the day, oh, thank you. Um, at the end of the day today, I had students do a survey, ask a few questions about, about how the day went, how prepared they are for next year, things they're looking forward to, things they like about school, and uh, I put the results in there. I do want to I do want to give uh, Mrs. Housing a chance to speak. She is the Tech Center Assistant Principal, and Tech Center is not available for freshmen, but it is available for so some sophomores and juniors and seniors for multiple reasons. They have a ton of programs, I think 12 programs at the Tech Center for students to think about, and they have dual enrollment opportunities as well for our juniors and seniors. So when I was talking to students today about all the courses they can take, about all the graduation requirements, I was reminding them to make sure, like Mr. Shelton said, make sure you pass all your classes. Because if you are on track to graduate, that opens doors for you later on. It opens doors at the Tech Center, namely the dual enrollment and, and all the wonderful programs I'll let her speak about. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, today, when I was here earlier today, I looked at some and went, holy cow, they're in high school already. So it's, it's awesome to see everybody. Just want to talk to you real quick about the Tech Center. Um, it's an opportunity for students, and I'm a firm believer that the student needs to pick what's best for each student, and sometimes that includes Tech Center, and sometimes it doesn't. So um, as you're going through your high school experience, I think it's good to keep an open mind, but also know that um, you're kind of in charge of your ship, that you're setting sail right now, and you have to do what's best for you, okay? Um, there is a handout that I left here. If you didn't get one in the beginning, um, there are more. Inside of it just talks about all of our 12 CTE programs, like Mrs. Blacker talked about. We do not house an agricultural program at the Tech Center because all of our local schools house that program. But they all fall under the same umbrella of CTE, okay? So uh, these are primarily hands-on programs where kids can uh, come and learn. They can have opportunities for work-based learning and on-the-job training. Um, they can earn several certifications, and I included a sheet inside that we can see which certifications each program offers. Uh, as first-year students and as second-year students. We are open to sophomores for certain programs. Those four programs as of right now are cosmetology, automotive, hospitality, food service, and visual communications, okay? So uh, that's something your home school has to approve, and that would be for those that are on track for graduation and have their classes, they're passing their classes and have a plan in place. The other hand up inside of here just goes over our dual enrollment cohort. These are college level classes. So this is uh, another program we have at the Tech Center but it's not career tech education, so it's not primarily hands on. You're gonna be sitting in front of instructors and actually learning like you would in a, in a normal class that you're, that you're used to, okay? So um, if you decide to be a part of this cohort, we have a, a counselor that will come out and meet with you individually. She will register you, she will sign you up for classes, she'll do all the background work for you to make sure that you're taking classes. First year students take the ones listed on here. There's really no deviation. If you come back for the second year, she'll sit down and meet with you and see where you're planning on uh, going after that. And then she will help you choose courses that would best fit your future needs. Okay. Um, I also attached a transferability chart to that so you can see how those courses transfer into various Michigan institutions. So the biggest thing I would say is um, some of you were at showcase night last week and got to do some hands-on things. Hopefully we'll get the eighth graders over sometime this, this year yet to, to visit the Tech Center and see all of the 13 programs that we have. And
then also, uh, as 10th graders, I will come and talk to you, and all of you will come over, and you'll choose three of your most favorite programs to see, and you'll spend about 45 minutes in each one. And then after that, you can hopefully make a good, well-informed decision to see if the tech center is a good place for you or not. Okay? I'll stick around after. If anybody has any questions around, uh, about the tech center, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Mrs. Hassan was one of our greatest teachers we've had here at Harvard Gage. We, we, miss, we miss her when she went to the uh, Tech Center. But whether students join the Tech Center or not, we're going to see her quite a bit. We invite her quite a lot back to the school, and they're going to they're visit the Tech Center to look at the opportunities firsthand. She'll be part of that as well. So thank you, Mrs. Hassan. This is another, another one of the survey results from, uh, from earlier today. We're going to move to the graduation requirements. If you, if you want, one of the handouts I had was in relation to graduation requirements. And a lot of these, a lot of these haven't changed dramatically since your parents were in school, since, since I was in school. They've changed a little bit, but for the most part, they're basically the same. In order to graduate, students need certain things fulfilled. The first thing is 24 credits. That's real similar back to when we were in school. You have to take the Michigan Merit Exam, which students do in 11th grade by taking the SAT, ACT, Word, Keys, and EBSTAT. A new one, the last couple of years, has been students have to be CPR certified. A lot of our students do that at Tech Center or if they're in a volunteer fireman service, but if not, we have opportunities for them to do that here at school. And the last requirement is, is the 100 service hour which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. First off, the grad requirements for the 24 class credits. Very similar to when we parents were in school. You need four years of English. You need to have an English class every year. Same with math. You need four years of math and a math, credit, a math class every year. Those can include AP courses. Those can include dual enrollment. But you have to have some math class and some English class every single year of high school. The math requirement has certain name classes, algebra, geometry, and number two. The fourth one is up to the students. If students get a head start, the reason algebra has an asterisk there, if students get a head start by taking algebra in middle school and passing the test, they could start ninth grade with geometry and then algebra two and then take two math classes their choice. Three credits of science are required. Students as freshmen get to decide if they want to take traditional biology or ag bio, like Mrs. Black and Mr. Twilliger talked about. Additionally, students need to take chemistry or physics. They choose. And the third one is up to them. Could be a science elective or could be completion of a CTE program for the last one. Students need three credits in social studies or history. They need world history, U.S. history, and then a semester of civics and a semester of economics. One credit for physical education, and BFS counts for that. One credit of visual or performing art, and like Mr. Stramsky and Mr. Donna talked about, art is more than just an art class. Creative studies would count. Band, choir, music appreciation, all count as an art credit. This is probably a new one since when we were all in school. You have to have a year of technology. Technology could be any of the computer classes Mr. Rogan talked about. It could be robotics or Another option I, I mentioned to students today is yearbook. If a student is motivated to take pictures for yearbook and compile it on a computer, that counts as the, as the technology credit as well. Rounding out with, I believe, world languages is next.
Students need two credits of world languages. This is where the asterisks come in because there's some flexibility with how the state does this. Officially, the state requires two years, two credits in world languages. But there's a couple ways to do that, and the state allows some substitution in. Students could either do two classes in world languages, like Spanish one, Spanish two, or they could do one world language and an additional art credit. So one world language and two art could be banned for two years, music appreciation, art, creative studies. And the third option is to do one world language, one art, and then complete a, a CTE program. Those credits can be used or substituted for the second world language. Every one of those paths requires at least one credit in world language. A lot of our students get that in middle school, but if they don't, they need to have Spanish one. As a ninth grader, I would recommend that. And if they want to move on and do multiple, they can. There are some universities, namely University of Michigan, that is still quite a stickler about requiring the two years of world language. So if, if your aspirations are to apply to U of M, I would recommend taking multiple years of foreign language while in high school, even though the state allows flexibility for that requirement. Rounding it up, students need five elective courses. And like I explained to them today, anything you take in, a, in, a, a, in addition to the requirements is an elective course. So if there's a student who takes um, one technology class to fulfill, one computer class to fulfill the technology required, and loves it, and wants to take more technology classes, every subsequent technology class is not fulfilling a technology requirement, it's counting as an elective. There are two opportunities for middle schoolers to earn high school credit before they actually start high school. And that is with foreign language and with Algebra 1. At the end of eighth grade, students take an algebra test. And if they score well enough on that test, a C plus or better, they can start high school with a credit in Algebra 1. Like Mr. Twilliger said, they don't have to. They don't have to. Um, Start right with geometry. If they want to retake Algebra 1 to get a, a, a stronger foundation in that, they may do that. But taking that test at the end of eighth grade and passing it gives them the opportunity if they want to start high school with geometry and get that credit before they even start high school. Similarly with Spanish, students who take Spanish while in middle school can earn credit in high school by completing the, the Spanish one content. If you don't have a middle school class with Spanish one, you should start, you should put that in your course request for next year. Just a couple of reminders that I, that I conveyed to students today in regarding to requesting courses. We can't guarantee that every single student gets every single class that they request. We do our best. We do our best, but we have about 215 students, about 12 teachers, seven periods of the day, and not every single combination can work for everybody, but we do the best we can, and they will get most of what they want. They will get all of what they need for sure for the requirements. The next requirement to graduate is the service credits. And students need 100 service credits in order to graduate. This is something that started, I think, around 2000, maybe the last uh, 15 years or so. 100 hours sounds like a huge number. But it's spread over four years. In the course of high school, students need 100 credit hours. And there's two types of, of service credits when it comes to the 100 hours. The first is an activity. Any sport, any club, that the student participates in for one season counts as 25 hours. So if a student is on the football team for one season, that's 25 hours right there. If a student is in robotics or the board game club or volleyball, those are each 25 hours for that season. So if a student does three activities in one year, tonight 
the 75 hours right there and a good chunk of the way on the, uh, through those requirements. The second category is service. This is volunteer work. This is work that students do for free to help out their school, their community, their church, their neighbors. Could be babysitting, could be an accolade at church, could be shoveling the, driver, the, the neighbor's driveway. Things that they do that are volunteering to help others out. So students need a total of 100 credit hours, but they can't do all of one type. A student that's in multiple sports, multiple clubs, will tap out at 75 in the activity category. All students need to do at least 25 of each category. Activity, that's the sports and the clubs, and service, that's the volunteer. We know at Harbor Beach Schools, we know that students who are involved in school activities and involved in their community, students who volunteer, make the best students and make the best grown-ups too. So we want to encourage them to be involved in their school and involved in their community. The forms that I had sitting out for the service credits, these are the forms that students would fill out after they've done community work, after they've done volunteer work. We have these available in the office for students to pick up at any time. And they don't have to wait until they're a senior. There's a lot of students who complete all their requirements as a freshman. They participate in multiple sports, do some volunteer work at church or for their, or their neighborhood, and then they're, they're done and don't have to worry about it. Another survey result from today. Pretty good spread there. A lot of kids like Fizz Ed. No surprise. We have a ton of extracurricular opportunities that we talked about with students today. This is most of them, but there's, there's even more than that, I'm sure. A couple that didn't exist when, when we parents went to school, eSports is competitive video games. Mr. Roblo mentioned that. Competitive video games, I could only imagine. My, my parents wouldn't even believe that. And another one that, that I don't believe existed, I know didn't exist for me, was clay targeting. That's trap shooting. And that, that's hosted at the Harbor Beach Gun Club. So if high schoolers, if they're interested in that, they can certainly sign up. One of the things I told students today is, you can sign up for these things, even if you have no experience in them. If you've never shot a gun before, you can sign up for the Clay Target League. The coaches will let you use their equipment. Most of it is, is provided by donation or by grants, so we try to make the entry cost as low as possible, even, even in some use it's not. So lots of opportunities to get involved. This is, this is what a bunch of the students said they were anticipating, participating in next year. Looks like some good members for basketball there. Football, volleyball. All right, next I'm gonna hand this over to Mr. Floyd to talk about the Zello course plan. This is where students put in their requests for next year. We went through the, the Zello uh, course planning today. Um, the students were able to pick out courses. Um, there's essentially five courses that are, or five subjects that are pretty much locked in. Everyone needs an English class, everyone needs math class, everyone needs social studies, everyone needs science, everyone needs PE. Those five are pretty much locked in. They have some choices with, um, with art, music, technology, um, foreign language. Um, and so all of them should have gotten to a spot where they are able to take a look at their cell account with you, make sure that you approve of the choices that they made, and then we'll solidify that by having you sign off the printed copy and return that. Um, I would have liked our technology to work a little bit better today. We had a, a couple of issues. Um, 
probably at least partly on my end because it was my first time kind of going through there. So I don't want to say it's all something else. And it's something that's been a universal problem. This session I was talking about with some of our country school students that um, because they're in a different school district, we can't access their student information systems the same way. And this is a problem that other schools in our county are having as well. So what I would say is um, your students should be able to log into their Zello account from home. You should be able to see those courses. You should be able to make changes if you want to. But if you like what their choices are, and you approve them, print those out, sign them, and return them to us so that we know that you've approved of those. And the people that have students at the country schools before you leave today, I'll show you what they wrote down. I'll have to enter that back to school years over so I can roll the system for our student information system over and enter them back in. But I want to make sure they're included in our discussions. So there should be a Zello um, sheet for you. If you're having any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, you can always email me. And I think do you have that on that side or the different side of which uh, You can email me if you can't find it. I can print it as a PDF and send it to you if that's uh, an issue. Um, I don't need to have a printer per se. I can print it on the table over to uh, Ola and Zion and the country schools. We can make this work. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, we have some special deadlines that we need to get done, um, but I don't want anybody to panic. I'd like all this stuff in by Friday, which I know is super tight, um, but there's some, um, there's some concerns with the schedule with some of our older students' classes. If you can get those back to me as soon as you can get them back to me, that's, that's soon enough. I don't want to be running around here Friday like, oh my god, this is what I didn't get this early. Like, it's okay. We'll, we'll solve this out after spring break. And it might be that I have to come to some of the schools after spring break. So, um, anyways, uh, that's essentially what we did with the Zello course planner. And the nice thing about Zello as well is that you're able to go back in and look at what classes you might want to take as a sophomore, as a junior, as a senior. You can explore some of the different options. There's um, modules that are inside there. They will do some career planning. Um, what kind of uh, careers might you be interested in? There's some assessments and stuff that you can do. How do I find out what it is that I want to do? Um, some of the things that Mr. Williams did before I got here and that I will do after, um, after today at least with, with students is go back to those things. Try to find what your path is. Try to find what your passions are. What is it you want to do with your life, with your career? And how can we make some choices in high school and beyond there to help us get to what we want to do? So those things are coming. But nowadays, we just need the schedules, and that should be a Zello. And like I said, if you're having any problems at all, whether I need to print out something and send it to you, drop it off at one of the schools, whatever, we'll make this all work. So thank you. That's it. Just one more quick plug for Remind, if you haven't signed up already. Uh, it's a good way to stay informed. We do a lot of our voting for homecoming, coming home, class officers, but also deadlines, job opportunities, volunteer opportunities that come up. We use Remind as well. I think that was on one of the handouts Mrs. Hill there. The last thing I wanted to just mention is that I know that several of our staff members are going to stick around. So if, if you have questions about which science you want to take, which technology class you want to take? Which music class you want to take? Art class you want to take? Which Spanish class you want to take? The teachers and I are going to stick around. And Mrs. Hassan will be here for a little bit to talk about Tech Center if you have questions about that. If anybody wants to have a quick tour of the school, if you haven't been here, I'd be happy to accommodate that as well. I believe, I know, that next year with our incoming class of 2026 is going to be another great year to be a pirate. So thank you for coming. Have a great night.